So if you have any map design sense at all, then you will probably want to make your map so that um, the blue team is sealed off for a little while before the round starts, and then the door to the blue spawn will open and blue can come out and start doing damage. It'll give red a little bit of time to set up, and it'll give a blue a little bit of time to set up themselves with uber charges and whatnot. So here I've got this little section that I've already made um, that will be our gate for the door. Now I've already made doors in previous, um, and this, is, this should all be um, a uh, recap from what I've been doing. Just want to make it very uh, comprehensive, so that's why I'm I'm doing this. So um, to make a door, again, we're going to need two different. Um, well, uh, in this case, for making a door, we're going to need just two different entities. We're going to need the door object itself, and we're going to need a prop that represents the door, which looks like something interesting. So I'm going to make that prop first. So go to entities and then prop dynamic because we want the prop to move. It's going to be a door and doors move. So properties, um, we're going to give it a model. So world model, browse, and I'm going to use a great model, uh, G-R-A-T, and right here door great 001 bottom. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you use, um, but this looks most like an interesting door, so I'm going to click OK, apply that, I'm going to disable the shadows, yes, apply, and we'll mess with the parent in just a second. I'm going to, let's see, transform that, oops, 90 degrees, probably need a little finer tuning. I've also got this floor plate right here. You don't have to have that either, but it makes it look like the door is disappearing down into the, into the emptiness, uh, and that'll be cool. All right, so I've got my prop. Now I'm going to find a nice little metal texture to go with the door. I like using metal beam, but you can use what you want. You can even use no draw if you like. Um, I'm going to slim this down a little bit. Make sure my door covers the entire the um, the length of the wall. Pop that into existence. Again, I'm just making a brush right now. There we go, and I'm going to right click, tie to entity, and then func door is the type of entity that we want to use. And hit apply. We're going to have to give this a name. So um, blue spawn door one, because this is round one. Uh, we want to render. We do not want to render render this um, this metal part. We want to this to be invisible so we can see the grate, which is the important part. We can adjust the speed. We want to make sure the door stays where it is once the um, the door has opened. We don't want uh, we wouldn't want it closing again and then having to reopen it every time somebody comes through it. Although you can do that. Um, this is all uh, variable stuff. I'll, I'll make a note about it in just a second. We want to disable these shadows. So what I was saying was, um, uh, it depends on what kind of map you have. Some doors you'll want just to uh, uh, come open and then stay open, and other doors you will want uh, them to be kind of uh, automatic doors, which activate when players get close to the door and then open up and close when they're done. Right now, what I'm just doing is a one-time door that will open when the round starts and will not close again. Um, this could be either a bad or a good idea, depending on where the blue spawn is, so you need to make sure that red does not, cannot, um, is not able to like get easily into the blue spawn and like shoot people in there. That really sucks to get spawn camps. So uh, that's a map design decision. I'm just doing it this way because I've done an example with the automatic door with the trigger. Uh, we're not going to have a trigger um, area here to open and close the door as players go through. Okay, one more thing we have to do is the prop that is associated with this door, pull up the properties on that, and then parent right here, we're going to mark this door. So the parent of this prop is the blue spawn door 1, which means that when the blue spawn door 1 moves, the prop will move with it, so it'll look like the door is opening and closing. Uh, did I forget anything? Did I forget anything? Yes. So I want this uh, move direction right here to be uh, the properties of the door. 
I want that move direction to be down. You can, again, this is a personal preference. You can have the door move to the side. You can move it up in the space for all I care. Um, but I'm going to have it move down. Apply. And very quickly, I'm going to copy this door and then put it on my other locations. This part is not important for the tutorial, really, because I have already explained how to make this door. So, very quickly, copy, paste. I'm making two more doors, one at the um, stage two and one at stage three. Do note, however, if you are copying and pasting quickly like I am, that you're going to have to change these door properties. Um, this um, uh, the door right here will still be named Blue Spawn Door 1. You need to change that to Blue Spawn Door 2. And furthermore, that this entity, or this prop right here, is now associated with the new Blue Spawn Door 2. You need to have them as distinct places, because I was running into this when I was testing it. Uh, if you have the same name, then that will mean um, the doors will open when they're not supposed to. They'll open at the same, like, stage 3 doors will open and stage 2 doors open, or all kinds of bad shenanigans. Make sure they have different names and that the props are correctly associated with the, the doors that they are um, attached to right there. So those are the doors. We have our doors, we have our spawns, we have our capture points, and now it is time to add the actual, um, the cream filling of our, uh, of our map, really, which is the actual entities for the game, the push style game itself.